masters and mistresses. You are most welcome. This expedition will take one hour and 15 minutes. I ask of you all to please silence your cell phones and to begin our journey by moving to the stairs immediately. What will we do with the drunken sailor? What will we do with the drunken sailor? What will we do with the drunken sailor early in the morning? Way hey, and up she rises, way hey, and up she rises, way hey, and up she rises early in the morning. Silence! Question, what do you do with the drunken sailor? Shave his belly with the rusty razor! Shave his belly with the rusty razor, shave his belly with the rusty razor, shave his belly with the rusty razor. Mother's milk were scarce out of him. 
Let him approach. Most radiant, exquisite, and unmatchable beauty. I pray you, tell me if this be the lady of the house, for I am resolved. I would be loath to cast away my speech, for besides, it is excellently well penned. I have taken great pains upon it. Whence came you, sir? Sweet lady, <laughs> a comfortable doctrine, and much may be said of it. Where lies your text? In Orsino's bosom. In his bosom. In what chapter of his bosom? To answer by the method in the first of his heart. Oh, I have read it, it is heresy. Have you no more to say? Good madam, let me see your face. Have you any commission from your lord to negotiate with my face? You are now out of your text. But we'll draw the curtain and show you the picture. It's not well done. Excellently done as God did all. Tis in grain, sir, to under wind and weather. Tis beauty, truly blent, whose red and white nature's own sweet and cunning hand laid on. Lady, you are the cruelest she alive who will leave these graces to the grave and leave the world no copy. Oh, sir, I will not be so hard-hearted. I will give out diverse schedules of my beauty. It shall be inventoried in every particle and utensil labeled to my will as item two lips and different red, item two gray eyes with lids to them, item one neck, one chin, and so forth. <laughs> How does he love me? With adorations, fertile tears, groans that thunder love, sighs of fire. Your lord does know my mind. I cannot love him. He might have took his answer long ago. If I did love you in my master's flame, with such a suffering, such a deadly life, in your denial I would find no sense. I would not understand it. Why, what would you? Make me a willow cabin at your gate, and call upon my soul within the house. Write loyal cantons of contemned love, and sing them loud, even in the dead of night. Halloo your name to the reverberate hills, and make the babbling gossip of the air cry out, Olivia! Oh, you should not rest between the elements of air and earth, but you should pity me. You might too much. What is your parentage? Uh, above my fortunes, yet my state is well. I am a gentleman. Get you to your lord. I cannot love him. Let him send no more. Unless, perchance, you come to me again to tell me how he takes it. Love make his heart a flint that you shall love, and let your fervor, like my masters, be placed in contempt. Farewell, fair cruelty. What is your parentage? Above my fortunes, yet my state is well. I am a gentleman. I'll be sworn thou art. Methinks I feel this use perfections with an invisible and subtle self to creep in at mine eyes. Oh, let it be. What well, hope have I left your madam at your service? Run after that same penis messenger, the Duchy's man. He left this ring behind him. Would I or not tell him none of it? If that the youth will come this way tomorrow, I'll give you reasons for it. Hide thee, Malvolio. Madam, I will. I do, I know not what, and fear to find. Mine eye to rate a flatterer for my mind. Fate, show thy force. Ourselves we do not owe. What is decreed must be, and be this so. Enemies and do 
Orsino's court, else I would very shortly see thee there. But come what may, I do adore thee so. This danger shall seem sport, and I will go. <laughs> Were you not even now with the Countess Olivia? Even now, sir, on a moderate case, I have sent a ride with hither. She returns this ring to you, sir, though you marry the same in my pains to have it taken away yourself. She took the ring of me, all none of them. Come, sir, you peevishly threw it to her, and her will is it should be so returned. If it be worth stooping for, there it lies in your eye. If not, she is the fine.
Dukes is today with my lady. She is much out of quiet. For Monsieur Malvolio, let me alone with him. If I cannot gull him into a neighbor and make him into a common recreation, do not think I have wit enough to lie straight in my bed. I know I can do it. What wilt thou do? I will drop in his wit some obscure epistles of love, where by the very color of his beard, shape of his leg, manner of his gait, expression of his eye, forehead, and complexion, he shall find himself most feelingly personated. I can write very like my lady or niece. On a forgotten matter, we can hardly make distinction between our hands. Uh, he will think by the letters that thou wilt drop that they come from my niece and she is in love with him. Lord Royal, I warrant you, I will plant you two. And let the fool make a third that he shall find the letter. Observe his construction of it. For this night, to bed, and dream on the event. Farewell! <laughs> For me, she's a good wench. She's a big old, true bread, and one that adores me. What of that? I was adored once, too. No, mm -hmm. nice, let's to bed. Thou hast need fend for more money. If I cannot recover your niece, I'm a foul way out. Come night, come night. Uh, let's. It is too late to go to bed now. I'll go where some sack. Come, come. Oh. <laughs> now, good Cesario, with that piece of song, that old and antique song we heard last night, we thought it did relieve my passion much. More than light airs of recollected terms, these most brisk and giddy pace at times. Come hither, boy. My life upon thine eye has stayed upon some favor that it loves, hath it not, boy? A little by your favor. Oh, what kind of woman is? Of your complexion. She's not worth the event. What years of it? About your years, my lord. <laughs> Too old by heaven! Let still the woman take an elder than himself. So wear she to him, so sway she level her husband's heart. Boy, however, we do praise ourselves. Our passions are more giddy and unfirm, more longing, wavering, sooner lost and more than women's are. I think it well then. What much more, Cesario? Uh, get me the off same sovereign cruelty. Tell her, my love, more noble than the world, prizes not quantity of dirty lands. Uh, but if she cannot love you, sir. I cannot be so answered. Sooth, but you must. Say that some woman, as perhaps there may be, hath for your love as great a pang of heart as you have for Olivia. You cannot love her. You tell her so. Must she not then be answered? There is no woman size can find the beating of so strong a passion as love doth dim my heart. No woman's heart so big to, to, to hold so much. Make no compare between that love a woman can bear me and that I owe Olivia. Aye, but I know. What does sell them? Too well what love women to men may owe. In faith they are as true of heart as we. My father had a daughter and loved a man, as it were, perhaps. Were I a woman, I should your fortune. And what's her history? Blank, my lord. She never told her love, but let concealment, like warm, like a warm in the bud, feed on her damask cheek. She pined in thought, and with a green and yellow melancholy sat like patience on a monument, smiling at grief. Was not this love indeed? But died the sister of her love, my boy? I am all the daughters of my father's house, and all the brothers do, and yet I know not.
Your drunkenness. Oh, Sam! Our servants be drunk, we must of course get peace. Besides, you waste the treasure of your time with a foolish knight. Well, that's me, I warrant you. One Sir Andrew. And I'm ready to come in forward. What employment have we here? By my life, this is my lady's hand. These be her very C's and her U's and her T's, and thus makes she a great P's. It is in contempt to question her hand. To the unknown beloved, this and my good wishes, I may command where I adore, but silence like a Lucrece knife with bloodless stroke my heart doth gore. M O A I doth sway my life. M O A I. This situation is not as the former, and yet to crush this little, it would bow to me. For every one of these letters are in my name, but softer follows prose. If this fall into thy hand, revolve. <laughs> in my stars, I am above thee. But be not afraid of greatness. Some are born great, some achieve greatness, and some have greatness thrust upon them. Remember who commended thy yellow stockings and wished to see thee ever Cross Arthur, I say remember, go to the art maid if thou desirest to be so. If not, let me see thee a steward still, a fellow servant, and not worthy to touch fortune's fingers. Farewell, she that would alter services with thee, the fortunate unhappy. I, I must not now imagine she gave thee for every reason. Excites to this! But my lady loves me. She did commend to my yellow stockings of late. She did praise my leg being cross guarded. I will be strange, stout, in yellow stockings, cross guarded, even with the swiftness of putting them on. Don't my stars be praised. <laughs> My duty 
have in the most humble service. What is your name? Cesario is your servant's name, fair princess. My servant, sir. Your servant to the Duke Orsino, you. Madam, I come to wet your gentle thoughts on his behalf. By your leave, I pray you. I bade you never speak again of him. But would you undertake another suit? I'd rather for you to solicit that than use it from the spheres. A good madam. Give me leave, beseech you. I did send after the last enchantment you did hear, ring in chase of you. So did I abuse myself, my servant, and I fear me, you. So let me hear you speak. I pity. That's a degree to lie No, on. not a step. For tis a vulgar proof that very oft we pity enemies. Oh. The clock upbraids me with the waste of time. Be not afraid you could do that. I will not have you. Yet, when youth has come to harvest, your wife is like to reap a proper man. There lies your way, due west. Ooh, and westward, ho. Grace and good disposition attend your ladyship. Go nothing, madam, to my lord by me.
there you shall have me. I'll be your purse bearer and leave you for an hour. To the elements! I do remember!
but thou liest in thy throat, that is not the matter I charge thee for. Very brief and to exceedingly good sense, Liz. I will wait lady coming home where if it be thy chance to kill me, thou but killest me like a rogue and a villain. Very to the ready time of the law. Farewell, and may God have mercy upon one of our souls. He may have mercy upon mine, but my hope is better, so look to thyself, thy friend, as thou usest him, and thy sworn enemy, Sir Andrew Aubis. <laughs> if this letter moves him not, his legs cannot. I'll give it to him. You shall have very fit occasion for it. He is now in some commerce with my lady, and will buy my heart. Go, Sir Andrew. Stop him for me at the corner of the orchard. As soon as thou seest him draw, and if thou draw, swear for him. Away. Nay, let me alone for swearing. Thou will not tell me to his letter, but will deliver his challenge by word of mouth, set upon a Duchica, most notable report of valor, and drive the gentleman as I know. He will actually receive it into a most hideous opinion of his rage, skill, fury, and impetuosity. This will scare them both, that they will kill each other by the look of it. Like cockatrices. I have set too much into your hearts and laid my honor to much carry out. There's something in me that reproves my fault. With such a headstrong, potent fault it is that the mocks will prove. With the same behavior that your passion bears goes on my master's grief. Here, wear this jewel for me. Tis my picture. Refuse it not. It hath no tongue to vex you. I beseech you, come again tomorrow. What shall you ask of me that honor save me upon asking him? Nothing but this, your true love for my master. How with my honor may I give him that which I have given to you? I will acquit you. Well, come again. Fare thee well. Being like me, my fair, my soul to hell. Gentlemen, God save thee. And you, sir. That defense thou hast, but take thee to it. Of what nature the wrong card thou hast done him? I know not, but thy interceptor, full of despite, bloody as the hunter, attends thee at the orchard's end. Be swift in thy preparation, for thy assailant is quick, skillful, and deadly. I pray thee, sir, what is he? He is indeed, sir, the most skillful, bloody, and fatal opposite that you could possibly have found in any part of Lyria. Oh, I meant. He's a very devil, they say he has been mentioned in the Shah of Persia. Plague on it! And I thought you'd been valiant and so cunning and fence, I'd have seen him damned ere I have challenged him. Let him let the matter slip, and I'll give him my horse, great Capulet. Uh, I'll make a motion. Stand here. Make a good show on it. This will end without the perdition of souls. Mary, I'll ride your horse as well as I ride you. <laughs> Gentlemen, there is no remedy. He will, for his own sake, fight you. Uh, so draw, for the support of his vow. He has sworn he will not hurt you. Pray God defend me. A little thing would let them know how much I lack of a man. Come, Sir Andrew. There is no remedy. He will, for his honor's sake, have but one bout with you. He cannot find a dwell to avoid it. But he has sworn, as he is a gentleman and a soldier, he will not hurt you. Oh. Uh, come on, do it. Pray, God, you keep his own. I do assure you, tis against my will. <laughs> I 
drunken sailor what will we do with the drunken sailor what will we do with the drunken sailor early in the morning way hey and up she rises way hey and up she rises way hey and up she rises early in the morning shave his belly with a rusty razor shave his belly with a rusty razor shave his belly with a rusty razor early in the morning